Hello. Hey, Adam. How you doing? All right. How are you? I'm doing fine. Doing all right. Sheltering. How about you? Yes, from the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's your lo going? lovely son? What's that? How's your lovely, your son, your progeny? Oh, how is he? How, how is it that you have short hair, though? Who's cutting your hair? I just it? washed it. Oh. But is, is, are you getting haircuts or trims? Uh, no, I just washed it. It's very long. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. You're, you're letting your freak flag, or not letting it. It's just going to fly regardless. It's flying. It's yeah. flying, man. Anyway, Jacob is, is okay. Sadly, it's funny you ask, because uh, he just went off to L.A. this morning with his mother and half-sister. They, they left this morning for Los Angeles, so I'm, I, I'm sort of just trying to get the hang of the, uh, his, his, the, his absence. Ah. Uh. Uh, I'm I'm sort of depressed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you getting out much or no? Yeah, I mean, I get out. Uh, I, I one thing I do want to do now that I I bring that much less risk back to you know because he was living with me through the entire pandemic up through today. So mm -hmm. you know, was is it was was uh Jim going to join us or? Yeah, I think so. I just talked to him. He should be oh, here in a minute. No problem. So now that I I bring oh he I think he just texted. I think I, I will get out a lot more, actually. I mean, I've been very, very, very cautious, very conservative. You know, I, I, I uh, did the mask since the beginning and doing all the distancing, never get on the... I live in a... Temporarily, anyway, I've been in a high-rise where, you know, I just have not been getting on the elevators unless, you know, it's empty or, you know, if one person's in there, sometimes that's fine. I, if they're wearing a mask, of course. That kind yeah. Of so... I figure I, I, now that, again, that I'm alone, I figure I will probably take uh, longer walks because I've, I've definitely gained some weight and uh, I, there was nothing but being sedentary. Yeah. I've been taking bike rides in the morning at like six, you know, because oh, yeah. I'm up anyway, you know, and I'm just like, I sort of get it out of the way yeah. and then I don't have to negotiate later in the day because... Yeah, I don't no, know where that's... It's one of the many reasons why it's recommended to do that in the mornings. Uh, you know, it's, uh, especially if you're an author, you can avoid writing, <laughs> which is also recommended first thing in the morning. No, but uh, you get it out of the way. It gives you the adrenaline and, and all the other endorphin type of uh, releases that makes your day a little easier, I think. So I will, maybe that's my uh, goal is just to get up earlier and, you know, do a brisk walk or something. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's intense out there in some ways. I mean, I yeah. think I almost, I'm almost more afraid now than I was a month ago because there are people out yes. hanging out and That's right. drinking Hunting. beer yeah. in the street. And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's like we're living in New Orleans all of a sudden. I know, I know. I know, you're absolutely right. And it's human nature to relax after a certain, you know, time, especially when the statistics for deaths, hospitalizations are low and the natural inclination, of course, is to start to try to normalize. But in fact, you're absolutely, I think you're right. Um, you know, I always noticed, and I brought this up before, you know, when you're stuck and in, in, you're driving and you're on the highway and you get stuck because of a car accident down there and you're frustrated and you're waiting and waiting. And finally, you make your way in, the road is open, and people speed, man, they speed, yeah. they drive like lunatics. And often, you know, there are accidents because people are all of a sudden just, you know, out of frustration. And I feel like it's that similar mindset where it's like people want to give themselves a reward for having made it this far. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's intense. I think the way back is going to be, it's almost like um, smoking or something, you know, it's easier to just quit outright that it is have to negotiate well i'll have four a day or six a day or whatever and yeah and um you know i, I think when when this whole thing hit there was a lot of negotiation you know the gyms are open but do i feel comfortable going to the what oh maybe not you know yeah. no i don't want to go to that place i'll go to this place you know and, and that's kind of those kind of decisions are going to be reactivated you know even when it opens up I just, until they're, uh, uh, the way I've decided I'm going to handle it, and of course, I guess I could change my mind, but uh, is until there is a vaccine available, I am not going to take the risks. Yeah. I mean, just not. It's just not, to me, it's not worth it. You know, my ex-wife was here the last four days, and, um, you know, it was, uh, 
Yeah, she actually slept. I should say she spent the last, the second, the middle two nights at a hotel. Uh -huh. But the first night and then the last night she was here and I put her and her daughter in the bedroom and then I was out here with my son. And But I felt a little bit, you know, a little like uncertain about it. Yeah. Well, he's having trouble getting on. Ah, fuck him. Yeah. No, that's right. I wonder what the deal is. Feel like a click. <sighs> Sense. I, I don't know why you would have a trouble, but anyway, it doesn't matter. I like to bring Jim on once in a, every three years or something, you know, with one of his clients because he's he brings a perspective and he's a sweet guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. Yeah, it's been fun working with him because we're we're very good friends and I we know. haven't really worked together this this much. He's helping me with publicity, so it's nice. Yeah. Well, you have the Bard College connection, correct? Correct. Yeah. I was there in eighty. I only won one year because I, you remember, it was the first year of, lang of language and thinking. Were you there for that? Um, yeah, we called it breeding and drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we hadn't developed a sense of humor about it yet. <laughs> that was our problem. It was a very dramatic year to be at Bard. It was 82, I'm thinking, wait, let me think. I graduated. Is that when Leon's kid died? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, so it was very, and also my advisor, I, I, geez, I guess it's okay to say this uh, after, what's the statute of limitations on <laughs> college gossip? Uh, oh, Jim's joining in now. So let's wait for him on this one. It was your, yes, yeah, so it was, hi, Jim. Hey, Jim. Uh, hi, sorry, sorry. That's okay. No problem. Zoom, yes. Zoom was wonky yesterday, I'll tell you that much. I've had some internet problems of late. So. Oh, I'll no. tell you, Zoom was wonky yesterday, gentlemen. <laughs> and Skype will be tomorrow. Yeah. What's Skype? <laughs> yeah. It's no a Microsoft product, Adam. You wouldn't know about it. You're too, you're too young. Oh, no, no. Well, we were just talking about how actually we all did attend Bard. I was there. We were just about to talk about it uh, before we get into the film, but that the year that Leon Botstein's wife, uh, child was gone for, it was... Uh, oh, that was before we got there, yeah. Oh, so I was there the year before you guys. Yeah, we came in 82. Okay, so I was there 81, 82. I left in the spring of 82, and I just couldn't get myself back there. Um, it was such a dramatic and weird year, and, you know, felt very, very, very... Uh, tiny and just it was very hard to you know it was a very weird year my advisor who i don't think made it back there because he i think he was having an affair with leon's wife oh doug boz i don't think that was his name maybe oh, she there's had a, several there was <laughs> another there was another photography professor named doug boz who who had an affair with leon wife he didn't get tenure <laughs> right Strange yeah enough. Well, maybe it was the same guy but you no, know, I remember my my guy, my advisor. It's I ran into him that New Year, the following New Year's Eve, because I went with my parents to a party that a family friends were having, and the, Char, this guy was he was there. I couldn't believe it, and uh, and he remembered me because you know I sat in his office with my finger up my nose, and he, meanwhile was ha was you know in trouble, and he was denied tenure, so he never went back. And then I ran into him at this party. And then years later, in the, it was all, I mean, still in the 80s, but it was late 80s or very early 90s, went around there. I was at, in Prospect Park and he was working for the park system. Wow. I mean, it sounds like an upgrade to me, but <laughs> anyway. So, how you been, Jim? I've been hanging in there. Yeah. Locked down here in uh, Kensington, Brooklyn. Oh, okay. Are you are you uh, living alone, or are you? With I am living alone. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, I just am. As of today, I was telling uh, telling Mark that my son literally just went off. His mom picked him up uh, this weekend, and they went to Los Angeles as of this morning. Oh wow! So since this started, now I'm I'm on my own today. Wow. Excuse me, one second. <gasps> yeah. Exactly. Started already. Exactly. What's the protocol with strippers? I don't know. I, well, uh, I'll tell you the protocol. Stipulate uh, during the when you're ordering them up to for female ones. Uh huh. Because it was very embarrassing. 
<laughs> Kept them around anyway, though. Yeah, but, good, uh, yeah. They're nice young men. Well, speaking of strippers, I don't know. Really? <laughs> <laughs> segways, as segways go, They're, they work as hard as anybody else. I was thinking it's so funny because I didn't. It was only just before where I finally printed and say I should look at the press release. Uh -huh. but you see, because I'm so uh, dedicated to Jim Brown and Argo Pictures and to Mark Street, that without even seeing it, I wanted to have you guys on. You know, but then I watched it, and I was thinking as I was watching the uh, the film. Oh my goodness, this just brings up Studs Terkel to me. The, the, just the conversation and the, the, uh, just talk, the experience of working and the, that part of, of, of our individual identity, but also our, our collective identity and how we take it for granted, perhaps. But right now, holy, it's so incredibly uh, relevant and valid. Uh, uh, but you made this, you must have made the documentary in the last year or two or three. You didn't know about the pandemic, right? I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't divest all my stocks. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Studs Terkel was sort of the guiding light of the, fi of the film. I reread um, Working. Oh, you did. Um, be, you know, right about the time I started, and uh, I was afraid to. In the same way, we're afraid to read things that um, that uh, impress us at a young age. What is it? Uh, Juno Diaz says the worst thing he can do for Jack Kerouac is is reread him at forty or something. You know, so uh, I, I was worried that Studs wouldn't wouldn't hold up, but I, I just found it incredibly pure in his sort of active listening and drawing people out and things like that. And and there's a new book called Gig, which is sort of the same model. You know, interviewing um, people and they're classified according to job. You know. Uh, UPS driver, uh, taxi taxi driver, waitress, et cetera. So I, I just kept going back to that. And I, um, you know, I did a lot of research. I interviewed a lot of experts. Um, I thought about being more rhetorical about the film. And I ended up coming back to this, you know, just asking sort of simple questions and letting people respond, mm -hmm. as you say, to talk about who they were in, in relationship to their identity, to their work. Uh, well, so you're basically engaging various people who have uh, very uh, different types of jobs all around. The, I think you just went around the country. You're in, um, you know, yeah. the city and uh, in the, in the, in the uh, more rural areas, um, just talking to people. I don't want to say interviewing because there's a, um, just a sense of, of, provoking their, their, their ideas and their thoughts, uh, letting them speak. So, but you know, what I, I can't help it. I wonder, I suppose, if, if, if going into this project or as it was developing, if you felt like there's no way to tell the story without showing the diminishment of this country, despite the, all the flag waving still that America's number one. And I'm not even just talking about Republicans or, Trump lovers, but just, you know, there's this concept that America is the best, you know, and this is just, we've, we just, you know, we're in such decline in every possible way. This is just the one way, the gig economy, everything else, the way the unions have been dismantled, et cetera, could go on and on. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I went in thinking it was, it, it was going to be that story, right? that it was going to be um, people who were hard up against it. Um, there are other people who surprised me, you know, who, who sort of learned how to make the gig economy work for them in some weird way. Yeah. Um, or took, or uh, things like remote working, which is so important to our current time, of course. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a woman in New Jersey who, you know, she's buying stuff on um, Alibaba and she's creating crafts out of it and selling on Etsy. And, right. you know, it's not my idea of a good time, but, she was really a really positive. She had this sort of, you know, um, sanguine appreciation for peace work, essentially. So I, I tried to let those people surprise me as well, you know, rather than fit everybody into a drawer of an oppressed worker in a Marxist sense. Well, there's a couple of explanations or what have you. Uh, I mean, certainly one needs to keep themselves motivated and up 
Otherwise, you know, what's the alternative? So I, I could see that in her. And she was also had the Airbnb, right? Didn't, was that a different person? Person. It was the same person, and every aspect of her life was atomized was, and sold. You know, she rented out her bedroom and no. slept in the kitchen. She, um, you know, did did um, piece work essentially uh, for for doctors. You know, medical billing. You know, whereas twenty years ago she worked for a doctor, now she works for fifty doctors. You know, and does their billing and, and sort of everything is everybody's an adjunct basically you know right and um you know i i mean i think it's sort of sad on the other hand in her story she has this really weird story about how she had an airbnb guest who wanted her to give her a hug before to tuck her in um you know before she gets in her bed and it was this weird kind of human desire for connection within this really, you know, distant digital world. So I had stuff like that I thought was surprising. And I, I yeah. you know, to me, documentaries, they, they have to surprise you while you're making them. Well, yes. I noticed you did that in the docs. Jim, I'll bring you in in a second, sorry. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, um, I noticed you did that uh, often uh, asked your subjects, what's the weirdest experience you know, or the strangers, you know, whatever. You you often ask that. Was it, what was your sort of motivation there? If you're sitting at a dinner party around people you don't know, let's say, Adam, parents at your son's school 10 years ago, just anonymous people, if you ask them about their weirdest work experience, people can talk for hours. And... Um, I don't know, I wrote a, a companion essay to this called My Working Life, where I just sort of traced all the weird jobs I've had, all the interactions, all the just strange experiences. And um, I sort of turned that parlor dinner table conversation into a question in the film, because I think people, people always have something to say about it. Well, let me turn the tables then. What is, I wanna ask you both actually, what is the, <laughs> Let's let's pretend to be subject in in your own work, which is by the way called work songs. Maybe now is the best time to bring it up. It's called work songs, presented by the Maisel Cinema, or is that just an event? Or no, it's going to be they're going to stream it. Yeah, through the rest of the month. Very good. Through oh, through the thirty first of May, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Not to put you on the spot, but can you think, Mark, of a uh, maybe even making this film if there was a, a very weird or memorable moments that uh, came up. You mean, you mean in my working life or while making the film? Well, I was going to say we're making the film, but uh, maybe it, whatever. Yeah. It could be, it could be, uh, uh, your, the, your work life as a essayist filmmaker. Well, um, I have some stuff to say, but I, I want to turn it over to Jim and his, his work life. Jim and I actually worked together in Alaska. We made a uh, trip across the country and worked in the canneries up there. Um, Wait a minute, you buried the lead. Spooning the bloodline out of salmon. Yeah, we actually went with John Steinbeck. <laughs> and Jack Kerouac. And Jack Kerouac. <laughs> Jim, do you have a weird experience, weird work experience? That, that was definitely high on my list of uh, the weirdest work experience. Where were you in Alaska? Petersburg, it's in the, well, there's like all these islands in the Southeast. So we drove out there in between our junior and senior year, a bar to try and make money for our senior projects and um, with two other friends. And then a third we picked up in California. Is that right? Yep. So and this was the summer? The summer of 1985, something like that, yeah. And did that for a while, worked. Yeah, we did that. But I mean, as soon as we started there, we were like, this sucks. It's make enough money to get back there. So not. But it took, it took some time to get enough. What, money. Was, your, what was your senior project, Jim? Uh, my senior project was a bunch of films. Uh, there was one film about that trip that was called Canned Salmon. Um, oh, is that right? Uh, another thing called Daylight that's kind of like Bruce Bailey inspired personal diary and uh, some scratching on film. So, yeah, it was six fall too, right? Did you have that beautiful well, yeah. film of fall images? Some uh, so, your was your intention, Jim, to be 
a uh, an experimental filmmaker? Yes. Yes, I thought I would make films like Jonas Mekas or something. That's a reasonable. Yeah. Goal. Nice thing to think about. How did you get up in the, get get mixed up in, in distribution though? I just started doing uh, exhibition right uh, right when I moved to New York. I moved to California. Uh, Mark, because Mark graduated a semester early, and he was the first of our gang to go out there. And, gifted, uh, gifted as he is. And um, I started programming some experimental films at PS122. Because Michael Stiller, who went to Bard ahead of us, was doing something, and he just asked, "Did I want to do it?" And I was like, yeah, well, I'll do it. And did a few shows and then did that for a few years. Um, and then, you know, as years went on, did some other kind of <laughs> exhibition stuff, ended up working at the Pioneer Theater and uh, the East Village. And then after that, I just decided I didn't want to work for anybody else. So I might as well. Was there ever a uh, period where, I don't know if you had whether it was with Argo or before, where there was a sort of a, well, I don't know, a period of where, where there was actually a lot of activity, financial growth with it, uh, where you were seeing a lot of work gratifying uh, stuff happening in, in distribution. In the, in the years that I've been in business? Yeah. Uh, Asked and answered. <laughs> no, I mean, I've learned a lot in the year. I mean, I, I've learned a lot and there's been periods that things have gone well and were, mm -hmm. you know, exciting to see them go well, but um, it's always been hard. Uh, um, and I've never made a lot of money at it. So that's, mm -hmm. uh, um, but I haven't really been driven by that. But a lot of the stuff you've distributed, um, you know, I was just looking at Street Fight, I think. Yeah, it was one of the first. One of the first and, you know, it's like, to Corey. follow Cory Booker in New Jersey for his his first election, maybe? Or, yeah. Yeah, and then to think about him as a presidential candidate, not anymore, but he was. It's yep. interesting how that stuff never really, still has resonance, just like inquiring nuns, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now Marshall Curry won't return anyone's calls. Ah, uh, he does mine. He's my pal. He's a good man. I know, I was kidding. He's a, he's a mensch, yeah, Oscar-winning mensch. Finally. I know, you should see all of a sudden, we should have stopped making documentaries, Marshall. It's a waste of your time. Yeah. The <laughs> well, this series at the Maisels is great. It's a terrific, you know, it's a, yeah. it's a terrific program. It's great to, you know, have work songs. Mark's also showing his film Happy, which he made in 2000, which is 20 minutes, Mark? Uh, yeah, 20. 20. That was that, well, this one is barely an hour. Yeah, it's um, a little over an hour. Yeah. Short program, you know, which is, uh, but it's well worth uh, seeing. So tell me, so what do you, you go to the Maisel's website and they're streaming it for, uh, behind a, a paywall? Yes. Yeah, and then there, you know, there's other films throughout the month, you know, um, uh, Le Jolie May, Chronicle of the Summer, Inquiring Nuns, The Hottest August. Am I missing one, Mark? Um, no, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Candy Striped Nurses. and These are all your films, Mark? No. N no. Uh, it, the, the series is based on, on movies that take their inspiration from The Pretty Month of May, Le Jolie May, oh, I see. by Chris Marker. So oh, there's it is. His... I thought for a second that was the Chris Marker. I, honestly, I, I thought that sounds like the Chris Marker, but I, was, I thought maybe I was conflating. And then, of course, his film is based on Chronicle of a Summer by Jean Houch. Um, and, um, and then, you know, I think Inquiring all of us sort of... Chronicle of the Summer. Um, as well. yeah. So, um, you know, all of us sort of, I, I think, found inspiration in that kind of guerrilla street, you know, question asking, assertive question asking, shall we say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so, how did you how did you work, uh, Jim? Did you approach Maisels? No, M Mark had already been in contact with them, and then oh, I just said, "Let me help," you know, because I had just said to him last month, I think, "Work Songs has a, a new resonance in this moment. Let's maybe try and do something promoting around May Day." And then he was like, "Maisels wants to do something in May," and then I'm like, "Great, let's you know, let's do it." Um, 
Yeah, well, speaking of, you know, this sort of uh, working with the cinemas, especially our art house cinemas here in New York, and they seem to have worked out, especially with distributors, a way of remaining in the game. Technically, you could play this off of uh, Argo Pictures' website or Mark Street's website. Yes. But, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this a way of just all reaching out to each other? Yeah, I think it's an acknowledgement of the you know, the ecosystem that needs to exist for the theaters to exist, for the films to exist, for the audience to interact, you know, they're all dependent on one another. And and every filmmaker wants to see their films played on screen and every distributor wants to see their films played on screen and for these places to survive, you know, I, you know, and people got it together very quickly. I mean, you I know, agree. You know, led the charge and they were putting it together in a matter of days. And, you know, I mean, granted, and you know, companies like that, that put out a lot more films theatrically, are really, their bottom line is deeply affected by putting out eight to 10 films a year in theaters, you know? Um, and I mean, this isn't replacing it. It's certainly, you know, none of them are, you know, making huge numbers but people are you know going to the you know and the art houses are really wanting to remind their own membership and their own community we're still here we're thinking about you we're trying to you know keep you involved and um and i think you know i think a lot will go down i think a lot of you know i mean i was supposed to have another film open at ifc at the end of last month and just kind of like waiting to see what what happens there what's the what's that film um, it's called Push. It's a Swedish documentary. It's all about housing inequality in urban centers around the world. Um, Frederick Gerton, who did Bananas. Oh, and sure. Bananas. I, love, I love him. Yeah. I like, I, I'm a big fan of his film. Yeah, oh, great. I'll share it with you another time. Sure. Yeah. The name of the film, again, is called Work Songs, directed by Mark Street. And if you go to the Maisels website, well, May, oh, I see right here, maisels.org. Yep. And uh, I guess it'll be self-evident. Is, but it's playing through the end of the month. Every How does it work? Is it on demand? Yes. Okay. So you go, I mean, it's all part of Le Jolie Maisels, which all these films are on. Okay. Okay. And then you select out of their program which one you want to see. And then um, I had asked them, I'm not sure if it's for a multi-day rental. I think somebody had mentioned they thought it was only for one. And I'm I'm, I'm not sure if they're, because a lot of these others that are doing it are basically saying you could do it for, you pay for it and then you have three days to watch it as opposed to you've got to watch it now. Um, so I'm not sure what the length of time. I think it's minimum 24 hours, but I, I'm hoping that's a little longer. I actually got to buy it and see. So I wonder if you could do a watch party. Um, yeah, yeah, you certainly can. Well, it's, Mark's doing a conversation with Philip Lopate. Oh, right, yeah. Four o'clock on that's... Wednesday. Um, and um yep and so that's something else that you know will follow the screening i think that will be archived on the site so that if one doesn't join in they can see that later but um i, I will uh check into that and confirm with the nasals folks um today um and then um saturday at 4 p.m um there'll be a panel with brett story who directed the hottest august which is part of this um, series, and um, Gordon, Gordon Quinn. The right. indomitable Gordon Just, Quinn. Right. Spent uh, two weeks on a ventilator. I know, he was uh, at literally at death's door, you could say, right? Because- 77 uh, years old. How many, how, 73? 77. 77. Yeah, two weeks on a ventilator. That's, you're not supposed to bounce back from that. No. Not at 77. That's a, that's a powerful spirit. And just the nicest man. I did a conversation with him about acquiring nuns when we had it at Momi like two years ago and got to hang out with him a bunch of times. He's just. And, and he, what's his condition? Uh, I, from what I'm told, he's doing fine. You know. I mean, my and mother got it. She you know, lost a couple steps, but, um, you know. Yeah. Well, did he have pneumonia? I don't know. I just started, you know, he was one of the people, early people that, who I knew who got it and I was following his caring bridge thing and then everyone was sick and I was like, ah, I don't know. I just know he's out and better. That's uh, great. Amazing. Yeah. 
amazing yeah. story because the couple of people that I knew got it were a little younger than that. One person was probably close to 70 and, the, and another person was definitely 60 ish. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, but it's yeah. very scary. So, wait, so when is the, again, when is the, the Philip Lopate conversation? Wednesday at 4 p.m. This Wednesday. 4 p.m. Philip Lopate. And then Saturday, May 23rd, 4 p.m. Brett Story, Gordon Quinn. Thank you very much. About it. Yes, thank uh, you, Adam. Of course. My pleasure. And uh, I, may, I may go get my, a copy of, I have, um, it's out of reach, but I have a copy of, uh, of a subsequent book of, of Studs, which he signed. Wow. Um, about three years ago. Didn't he pass recently? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah way before that. <laughs> I know, this was back in the 80s. <laughs> the Good War, he signed it in the 80s when it came out. I was at uh -huh. a, working in a bookstore. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I'd, I'd been familiar with working even back then. Thank you, guys. Good thing. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, you know, thanks, Adam. Sure, sure. I think I got to, I think, I, oh, that was, I think that's everything, right? We, we, we went over everything? Yeah. Did I miss any? Nope. No. I think the last time I went out to an in-person event, I saw you at Momi. It was the beginning of that first look. Weren't you there? I don't think I was there for first look. Oh. Last well, then, I guess I imagine that you had been there. <laughs> it's not within yeah, so many other events such as that. But that was the last live thing I went out to, like, second week in March. Or Oh, was that recently? Wow. I, yeah, because they used to do well, it all, when they used to do it. Uh, it's only the fifth or sixth one, I think, right, or something around. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. But they, they used when they when David first started that. He it was like um, I thought even earlier in the year, but I, I could be misremembering. And yeah, I did yeah. go to the first one. I remember because they brought him on the podcast for that. I remember. Uh, but I have a good amount of people. But I remember ever going like. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. Yeah. Now those last days now seem like, you know, when I know we didn't quite wrap our minds around it. We just, who, who, who knew? I mean, it's an, uh, who possibly know that we'd become experts in this new. Yeah. We're all virologists. <laughs> right. I saw it. I, I, it was back when I, I had an almost infantilized view. I was like, well, daddy de Blasio and daddy Cuomo will tell me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah. How wrong I was. Yes. <laughs> well, thank God for the federal leadership. It, it, it yes. Well said, Adam. Well said. The press secretary has really been. She's she yeah, she's looks like right off the Fox News. You know. Yes, bandwagon. She looks like an intern. I you know. <laughs> well, I look forward to you know getting together off Zoom. Yes. At some I'm point. I'm tired of Zoom. And then seeing people on social media taking pictures of their Zoom screen, I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's so like do that? really, so do really that? lacking. Oh dear. So I should. Do, well, I did. I'm recording it. You know, I have the video of it. I don't need a screen grab. I have the uh, <laughs> oh, the entire video. I will extract the audio though from it. Okay, <laughs> not to blackmail the three of us. <laughs> what we look like here. Uh, three very handsome men. I, I, yes, uh, yes, thank you. The uh, bard years, I guess. The um, what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. So, what, the only good thing for me, as a you know, one of my hats is a podcasting hat, is that um, now that Zoom is so much part of the culture, it makes my life much easier because every time you wanted to bring this up with a let's say a publicist, right. It's like, uh, they can't do that. You know, they don't know what they're doing. But now everybody's on Zoom. So it's now, even when we go back, I can do a lot more remote stuff because people are right. maybe like, yeah, we Zoom all the time. Yeah. Like 80, I just, as a Zoom with Allison Anders. You remember the director yeah. of Gas yeah. Food Lodging, et cetera? Yeah. And she oh yeah, I Zoom all the time with my grandkids. And, you know, yeah. So it's, uh, it's a nice little benefit for me because uh, it records and, you know, it's fantastic, you know. Yeah, you don't have to worry about where we're going to do the interview and finding. Yeah, I gotta get, I gotta stop running around as much. Yeah, you know. Anyway, we're about. I guess we should uh, call it a uh, a day here. But uh, thank you, Adam. I, I, thank I, you, I, Adam. Pleasure. Same here, guys. Thanks for making time. Stay Take well care. and safe. You guys take care. Bye, Mark. <laughs>